Hello, welcome to News 24. My name is Tidi Madia and we're coming to you live from the Rock Center, the IEC's Results Operations Center. Here we'll be speaking to political parties, um, looking at the numbers as they're streaming in on the big board behind me. It's coming to you from the floor. Lots of numbers already underway, lots of counting. Numbers coming in from across the country to see which political parties have done well, who hasn't done so well, but most importantly, what do South Africans want for this country? I want to start off by reading these tweets. It caught my attention, and that's kind of, I'm going to, before I even introduce you to the guests. So, tweets went out today from Kenton Pillay from the Purple Party, the Purple Cow Party, you know, the ZACP, the South African Capitalist Party. And he tweeted this morning Good morning from the IC Rock in Swanee. I've just arrived at Roman Kabenek, is en route. Our early figures are looking dismal. Pay attention to that word. We are sitting at just about 3,000. ZACP votes with 25% of the votes counted in. Catherine goes on to say, on the plus side, major urban votes are not in yet, so we're still optimistic. We will do uh, a live YouTube update at 10.45, Wi-Fi permitting our posting link shortly. So we're waiting for that town hall meeting that they want to have on YouTube. But before that, we're going to speak to Roman Kabanek. He finally did arrive. Roman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Very frank and an open admission by Canton, you know, the results as far as ZACP are absolutely dismal. Just over 3,000 votes. Well, not exactly what we wanted, but I think it, it speaks to the principle of the party. The principle was always about transparency. Um, every donation we had was linked on our website um, with, with amount and name. Every time we did a YouTube live stream, a town hall meeting, we let people post their questions in the chat. Uh, the whole party was about transparency in the first place, so that is just an extension of that uh, principle, as a good term. But you know, it takes a brave move to come up and put your hand up and say, I can lead. I know how to help the country. I mean, South Africa is in a funk. Our economy is doing terribly. It takes a lot to put your hand up and say, listen, I'm the person, I've got the answers. And you and all nine other members of ZACP who came came to the, to the IC not too long ago to sign the Code of Conduct, we're all kind of... Um, very sure of yourselves, very confident that you have the answers. You know, you come forward as business people, not with a background in politics, and you say you have the answers, but clearly South Africans don't agree. Well, it's not about having the answers. It's about what sort of principles do we want in a country to make it work correctly. And the principles that we have are 10, 10 of them, and they are what would you call traditional, classical, liberal principles. The right to property, the right to freedom of speech, uh, the right to enlightened trade for self-interest, uh, the right to defend yourself and your property using a licensed weapon, for example. In any you know, normal country with a liberal democracy, these rights are, one would say, self-evident, in fact. So we never proposed solutions to global or even national problems. We just said, let's think about the principles that we want in Parliament that will help the country. Because one has to understand, people are poor because they don't have rights, not because they don't have resources. And that's a very, very important factor. If you look at tribal areas, state-owned land, the people who live there don't have the property rights to, those, to the land they live on. That's true. And they're poor because they don't have those rights. They got the resource, they have the land. But because they don't own it, they can't actually use it in, in a way that benefits them or increases their wealth. So that's the type of mindset we wanted to create and bring to Parliament. But it's been rejected. I understand your principles, mm. but South Africans have rejected your principles. Well, it's still a bit early to tell. Yeah, I mean, but at 25% when you're 3,000, you're not making it to Parliament from where I'm standing, you woman. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. But, well, what can we say? We had a strategy. We played it out. If, if people don't accept it, they don't accept it. We, we try our best. What does ZACP do? Um, is this the only time you'll attempt to get into the political realm? Do you then withdraw back to your world and lives in, in business? What do you do from here onwards? So 2021, municipal elections. It's a good way to start from a lower base in a constituency, a municipal constituency, and build up from there. That is an option and probably the one we will be taking. So you're not a rise-off, you're not done, you'll definitely continue trying to spread your message. Would you adjust your message to fit, to fit the South African psyche? I mean, some of the things that you propose, the classical liberal views, as you say, don't work in South Africa, period. You know, the, 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 we're not that open a society, we're not a capitalist society, we're a very complex society. Yeah. And on some levels, there's a high expectation of government to do for the people. And a liberal view doesn't have that take that perspective. In fact, it thinks it thinks of people on an equal footing, and it's not the case in South Africa. So, do you then adjust what you're selling 
your principles? No, no, not at all. So, I mean, based on the research and just based on anecdotal data, if you look at the ordinary South African, pragmatist, centrist. They want to ensure that they have jobs, they can feed their family, they can bequeath wealth to uh, the ch their children. All these are, are, are I'm not going to say they're liberal ideas, but they are human ideas. And if we can pr project those into parliament in some way um, and make them more palatable and make people understand that, you know, in fact, when you do trade with people and you make money from something, you are a capitalist, irrespective of what you call yourself. Sure, I, can, I can accept that one, yeah. Right. Um, I think it's maybe it's about making people aware that Whatever you're doing, we just put a label on it. That's called capitalism or liberalism or things like that. But most yeah. importantly, we just want the country to work together. So we're not going to change our, our principles at all. No, they're quite set but in it's stone. it's not working. I mean, I can tell you now, I can see it's not working. Well, think about it. We had a 52-day campaign. We launched on March 17th that of this year. That is incredible. But you know, the EFF can argue very similar points. Yet they did really well at the first attempt. They could argue a very similar point. EFF is an offshoot of an existing party. But they can Existing argue that they came together party. within months before elections and showed up, mm -mm. and it showed up through the numbers. It showed that there was an appetite for a party like that. Yes, but they already had they already had the base. They were an offshoot of an existing party, and the factions of that party uh, support the EFF fully in any way, especially with the uh, expropriation of land as our compensation and using historical analysis to justify that policy. It's not a brand new idea they came up with. No one said it was brand new. I said they came along and <coughs> people bought into the idea. Sure, and kudos to them. Kudos to them. Maybe they are a bit more persuasive than we are. I think that might actually be the issue. The, when Catherine mentions the urban vote, I find mm. that also interesting because from my perspective, the urban vote, particularly a black professional from an urban background, mm. they too buy into ideas of the EFF. In fact, most opinionistas have com commented on saying part of the EFF's growth comes from getting support from the black professional base. Sure. Um, <coughs> one would assume your principles appeal to some pe to people like that. And that's kind of where I'm trying to explain that for me, there seems to be a disconnect between what you're saying, which you say are basic principles in essence, and what South Africans want. Well, it's difficult to say what South Africans want. I mean, voting is a good way to see what South Africans yes, it is. want or aspire to be or hope to achieve in some ways. Uh, but, you know, totalitarian parties always had the intellectuals. Uh, in the middle class and the bourgeoisie because it's those with power that can actually use it uh, yeah. to, to accumulate more, often through state coercion, um, which the EFF approves of. What was the question? Sorry. <laughs> was there one? As, yeah, there actually was. I was trying to go back to the issue that, for me, your principles mm. still do not connect, even with the middle class, even with the urban people that you're waiting to see how they vote. I suspect that even then, ZACP won't do well. I keep going back to one thing, mm. that you are, there's a disconnect between what you're selling and what the people are looking for. Perhaps in some way, but I mean, if you look at what the DA did early on, they grew from 1.7 to 22%. They did. Under very similar principles. If you look at the Freedom Front Plus, they basically have some sort of principles, but they have a sort of ethnic background as well, which and a cultural background, which is very important to them and their voters. But the principles remain the same. quite quite similar throughout those sort of parties. So maybe there's actually too much competition rather than a lack of acceptance. That's interesting because now your counter argument is that you are also not new with your ideas. You know, you say the EFF is not new with ideas. Mm. What we're sitting with is your, your party, which is also not new with its ideas. Oh, no, and we, that there's no room then for you because as you're now saying, no, not too much competition. Not at all. No, we shamelessly took our ideas from, from classical Yes. political ideas. Yes. Uh, the, the key point was that we were unashamedly pro these principles, <laughs> unlike most other parties. I know you're talking about the <coughs> upcoming local government elections already as another chance. Is there, in, in, the, in the ZACP's head, is there thing, other things to be done? You know, because you do need to build a base and a name. You need to grow from where you are in order to do better. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about what it is that you'll be doing outside of parliament? If you don't make it in, and if you make it in, it won't be by many seats. What role do you then play when you do? For now, we're just focusing on that board over there. Uh, That's when, not when that is by Saturday, we, there is a long-term strategy, but it will be determined by the results here. No hint of the long-term strategy at all? Maybe start smaller. Start smaller. And another interesting thing about the, the ZACP, at least for me, mm. has to be how it came together. I asked you offline, like, Actually, what is the story? And you said you met on Twitter. Well, okay. Well, I know I know Kenton Pillay, the founder of, 
I met him on Twitter about five years ago. We became close friends. <clears throat> and he proposed this, this political party to me about, I would say, 18 months ago. And I said, oh, I like the idea. I like the purple cow. Right, what do we do now? Now let's get eight other people who are interested in the principles that we've developed or stole from uh, elsewhere. <laughs> um, and let's I do like the frankness. I really like that you are like, look, this is who we are, this is what we did. It's a, it's and maybe that is what we need as a country, we just don't know it. Appropriation is, is one of the greatest lubricants of progress. When we learn from each other and we take ideas from each other, that is the greatest lubricant of progress. Anyone who says appropriation is terrible has no idea what they're talking about. Well, but, okay, Roman. Yeah, yes. But, so just to end off, I still haven't met three of my conspirators. Or maybe that explains why you wouldn't have done great. So you don't even know three. No, we speak, we speak digitally. So how do you com communicate? So everything is digital. Everything is digital, absolutely. It's, a, it's 2019. On the, the one hand, I think it's important. great because we are digital. On the other hand, I think it's a little bit bizarre. Okay. I want to read some tweets to you because All some right. people have sent me to ask for your tweets. Um, while speaking to Roman, what, what, what your views are on the ACP. We've gotten a couple in at the moment. I'm looking at Ben Pula who says, you know, considering the poor showing, this poor showing, um, do you think your policy or denying people the right to water, I'm trying to understand what he's actually saying. Okay, he says, do you think your policy of denying people the right to water hurt you? So some of your, poli your, your policy positions, do you think that in such a violent country, the right to bear arms fail to resonate with voters? So it's again about the principles that you've put forward failing mm. to find expression with South Africans. Sure, well, okay, well, firstly, the policy is not to deny water. We just said water is not a human, well, I said it in my personal capacity before the party was formed. Water is not a human right. It's a commodity, and a commodity cannot be a human right. But it doesn't mean that it couldn't be, can't be given away for free in charity or be subsidized. That was the, the only tweet I said about that. Um, and in terms of guns, well, listen, there's 3 million gun owners in the country, licensed gun owners, 6 million unlicensed gun owners in the country. It's a big constituency with no real political home. But it doesn't, it has, again, you haven't actually found expression even with this constituency. And you take that position purely to try and garner votes? No, no, no. Well, the, the policy on guns flows directly from all the other principles. How do you protect life, limb and property? Uh, without the tools at hand, especially when the South African Police Service says they're unable to fulfill their constitutional mandate, numerous times in Parliament on the record. Okay, here's another one from Carly Hunt. Says, is Twitter actually a much less relevant marketing platform in South Africa than most people on Twitter perceive it to be when taking into account the outcome so far? Well, we, Twitter was one factor, but we used, we used the traditional ones, we used posters, we had physical town halls, we did physical campaigning as well. Twitter was just the easiest way to spread the message as quickly as possible. Based on your town halls and all these all these physical engagements you had, did you see then the outcome being what it is? Did you have a lot of people trying to engage with you to figure out what is this LACP about? Was there a lot of interest in the party to maybe even um, then be surprised by the outcomes? Well, the outcome was always going to be a surprise for us because we fall within the margin error of polling generally. So. It was really, we, no one had any idea. But in terms of physical, we had 80 to 100 people sometimes asking questions, spending two, three hours with them, speaking to um, students, 50 students at a time. So it's impossible to tell what the outcome would have been anyway. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then the last one is from Safa Rock Harper. What a name. Your party resonates a lot with millennials. How do you plan on canvassing for votes with that age group? Could we see ZACP presence at universities and college campuses in the future? That is one, one way to do it. Um, I think universities are right. The EFF have done this brilliantly, by the way. They've really taken university campuses and the SRC. Yes, that's and, kind and of regressing, really but anyway, that, that is actually regressing. In what way? In oh, the terms EFF's of losing control influence. of, of, parts right. of, of party space and in, 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 in right. advances they've lost quite a few SRCs right, right. this past year. And the SRCs are not actually indicative of um, opinion on campus. Very few no, people actually vote out. in them. But 50-50, yeah. Right, but because SRCs are given a platform, they're given a mandate, the people who are against the SRC tend to keep quiet or tend not to want to get involved. If the ZACP can come in and create alternative structures that allows open dialogue between ideologies, especially on campuses, that is one way to grow as well. But it's, you're not certain on the way forward as yet. You're waiting for the end of this election season? Well, I'm certain there's a, there's a, there are 
the certainty, but it's dependent on the end result on Saturday. But the one thing we can say for sure is that this is not the end of ZACP, no matter what. No. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. We started 52 days ago. Exactly. We're still brand new. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to stop it at that. Um, I think we will see a lot, as he's saying, of Roman Cabinet. We'll see maybe the maturing of the ideas or maybe a better understanding on our part as South Africans of what it is that ZACP has been trying to sell. And maybe then the next time we're here, the leaderboard will show us very different numbers, you know, as to uh, better, at least better than what we're seeing right now. For News24, my name is TD Madia. We'll be back. Remember, rolling coverage throughout the day. You can also follow us on social media. Our hashtag is South Africa SA, rather. SA Elections 2019.